grateful to be in the house of the Lord today? Who's grateful to be in the house of the Lord today? That you were able to make it today. And I know it's a little snowy. I said, you know what? I'm going to come to church today. Although it's a little bit cold, I'm going to give my life today. I want to give my time to God today. Amen? Why don't we worship him? Why don't you lift up your hands all together? Let's sing some songs to the Lord of Lords. Why don't you put your mind and your heart to God right now? Why don't you praise him like you mean it today? Why don't you praise him like he, he deserves it? stripes upon his back you are healed by the promises of God you are made healed you have authority yes, you do. Oh, life, to be strong yes, Jesus. by his power you will be made strong Virtue is flowing. Virtue. 
to dance. I hope you're ready to dance for the Lord. Amen. Don't think about whoever's next to you. Just dance for the Lord. Hallelujah.
Jesus. If you change my morning into dancing, hallelujah. That's the God that we serve. Knowing that there's a time where I don't feel like I can't breathe. There's a time in my life where I can't keep going. But God says, I'm going to give you more life. God says, I'm going to lift you back up. God says, I got your back. That's who we pray. That's the God that we serve today. Woo, let's bless the Lord and sing it. something more. I don't know about you, but I want to praise a little bit longer. I want to praise a little bit more for him. Let's sing it together.
today. I was talking to the Lord, trying to see what God wanted me to talk about before we have our, our, our testimonies. And he was trying to show me something really important where we sing that song about virtue is flowing. Virtue is flowing. God wanted me to talk about virtue. And what virtue means is the moral excellence, the essence of what is self-sacrifice, which is also the essence of good works. We have to become virtuous in God. Yeah. Amen. And I want to read here in, in 2 Peter um, chapter 1. We're going to read from 5 to 8. It says, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness for charity. For if these things be in, your, in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I don't know if you caught on to that. But everything starts in virtue. Isn't that insane? I thought it was, I was like, what does that really mean? We were singing the song earlier today, and I haven't had a chance to really think, what does virtue really mean? Why do I need it in my life? And I was talking to, to, uh, to Uncle Matt, and he was talking about how it's about holding a standard in the church. That if you can't hold your standard, and, and, and pastor preach today, if you can't hold the standard in the church, then why are you even coming? <laughs> so I want to encourage you, seek virtue in God. Not in other things. Other things in this world could be, could be good. But the, the essence of good, what is good here is Jesus. And that's who we're seeking for. Amen. Does anybody have a testimony? Brother Isaiah. Brother Joshua. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sister Nancy. Brother Kevin.
am so happy that you guys are here today. Man, I, I, I don't even, I really don't know you, but I'm so happy that you're here. I think that's really awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Michaela, sorry. God's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Chilo. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. If anybody else has anything, all right. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's all stand. Are you thankful to be here? I know there's three kids for sure that are thankful to be here. Yeah. Yeah, he got donuts today, so he. You good, bro? I gave them to you, bro. Come on. You can't have them till after church, though. Brother Mark wants you to share. Isn't it fun to come to church and be able to have a good time? Yeah. Praise God. We're not like the first church of the frigid air. <laughs> we have fun. Praise God. I'm glad to see everyone out. And Kev, you just made my heart fill with joy. Yeah. You often wonder as a preacher where people's minds are. Is That dude's quoting scriptures and telling you how to get saved and get your life right. He's a preacher. He's got anointing in his life. And I'm excited to see everyone here, and I'm excited to see all of you. And uh, Brother Jack, good to see you, sir, and all the kids. Man, it's exciting to be at church. Praise God. Quick, couple quick announcements. Tomorrow night, 6 p.m., I couldn't talk Brother Matt into preaching service, but he said he'd teach the young men a Bible study. So girls, sorry. But the boys, tomorrow, 6 p.m., bring everyone that you can because he's, he's going to help us. And if the older men want to come, come along. I don't know that we'll have donuts, but maybe someone will bring some. Praise God. We'll have coffee for sure. And then remember, women's conference coming up in the next couple weeks. If you want to go, uh, just let us know, and we'll get you put in the bus. Praise God. If you have a prayer request, I'll call him. Sister Shay. Or Sister Lexi. God. Sister Moran. Or Sister Moran. Or Sister Leah. I'm sorry. I just did Sister Moran. Amen. Sister Gracie. Caitlin. Amen. Sister Murray. Amen. Brother Chilo. Amen. 
me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Sister Nancy. Kenny. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Jesus name. Brother Matthias. Brother Kevin. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sister Misty. Amen. Sister Lechemy. Sister, or Brother Jeff. Amen. We saw her today. Sister Nancy. Yes, Brother Ricky. Can't forget our friend. Sister Zach. In Jesus' name. Praise God. It'll happen. Sister Gracie. Nina Lechemy, sorry. She thinks for now. <laughs> and the one next to her is thinking, yeah, call me by that name. Sister Erica. Amen. Sister Michaela. Amen. Amen. Brother Mark. Amen. Amen. Sister Marie. Amen. I got a special prayer request. Uh, remember Mark Sanchez. He's dealing with some major issues going on and came to ask us if we would pray for him. So uh, remember his name as you pray tonight. Anybody else? All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. God, I'm asking you, God, to touch every single person, God, that, that their name's been mentioned. 
God, put your hand in their situation, God, and deal with it, God, that you can get the glory. God, we ask you to draw them to your house, heal their bodies, touch their minds, help their hearts, God. Do what you got to do to stir them up and bring them in, God. We ask you to help them in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. If you have a tithe or offering, you bring to the Lord. Shake your neighbor's hand and, and tell them you're happy to see them at church. Can you sing it tonight? Fill the, the rain. Hallelujah, feel it falling. Hallelujah, oh, I feel the rain.
Can you sing it? Feel the rain down on me. It's the ladder rain together. I'm not talking about the weather. It's the Holy Ghost you feel here tonight falling down on me. Can you clap your hands to him? Tell him how thankful you are for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. I think I'm going deaf. Maybe I've already gone. I just, uh, I can't hear as well as I used to. But uh, thank God we've got a sound man. Brother Isaiah does a great job. I'm excited that all of you are here. I'm excited that everybody's feeling happy. And, and the girls are dancing, and the boys are dancing, and people are not froze up. Praise God. I, I do feel like God has talked to me. I was really striving um, to have my brother Matt preach, but he said no. That's okay. He can get away with that. Other preachers, maybe not so much, but that one guy right there, uh, I'd die for him in a heartbeat. He's one of my best friends if... Outside of my wife, the best friend I've got. So you ought to be thankful for him because he calms the big guy down when, when I get a little ramped up. And I get to do the same for him. You need a brother. You need a sister. I'm not just saying that because he's standing here. It has to do with what I'm going to preach. Turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 2. I do feel like God has been talking to me for a very long time. 2 Timothy chapter 2 about this subject and I, I thought I was going to preach it this morning but I felt led to go in the direction we went and then before I left the church I kind of felt that he would allow me to preach this tonight 2 Timothy chapter 2 if you're there say amen we're going to read verse 1 through 5. It says, Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. Tonight, I'm hoping, with the help of the Holy Ghost, to help you understand what God is trying to tell me to tell you so that you will tell others. Verse 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth him himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And this is where I want to take my text from. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Now, the subject that I want to speak to you tonight about, I feel led of the Holy Ghost to, has been on my mind for a while, but the title is going to kind of throw you off. The subject title tonight is The Race for Last Place. If it doesn't make sense, with the help of the Holy Ghost, by the end of the night, it should start making sense to you. So let's pray. Father, we love you. I'm asking you to help me tonight to speak your word. God, not anything from my flesh, God, but to speak only what you would have me to speak. Anoint my lips and anoint my understanding, God, to say the words you want me to say. God, anoint the people, God, give them revelation of your word. God, I'm asking you to help them, God, so that they understand God and become doers of the word and not hearers only. God, I'm asking you all to touch us in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Some of the best words in Pentecost as you may be seated. And you are dismissed. All right, well, I like Brother Mark's attitude. The subject uh, has been on my mind for quite a while, and it's a subject that is so important that if you don't get it and you miss this, you have one destination in front of you, and that destination would be hell. It is a heaven or hell issue. I told my brother Matt, I said, God showed me something I've never seen before, and I'm going to share that with you here in a little bit, but while our subject title doesn't make very much sense, uh, who in here wants to be in last place? 
Well, I saw a couple of people that maybe heard me preach a message like this before raise their hand, but honestly, no one wants to be last. As much as you would like to say you would, come play a board game with me. What do you want to do? Gotcha. Got him. Got her. We have a desire in us to want to be first. We really do. But you got to understand something about being first is if you're first, then where does that place God? Well, let's go look at the old commandments. I don't have a lot of real life scenarios. I got maybe one to talk about. But I want to show you who is in first place. Uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 1. If you can turn there. This is, I got to build some foundation. And I got lots of scriptures so that you know we're in the book. I'm not telling you something that Nate Leckenby particularly enjoys hearing. But this is something that the king has been talking to me about. And I want to be his man and do what he wants me to do because I'm going to keep him in number one. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. This It went dead. The devil don't like what I'm going to preach. Sound system. No, he, I don't know if it's batteries or what. We'll just figure it no, out. It's green. We'll figure it out. It'll be fun for those online. They'll say something and then wait. And then they'll think, did it die again? <laughs> That's what I think every time someone else's mic goes out while they're preaching. What did they say just then? <laughs> Verse 1 says this, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Why? Because he's number one. That's the first commandment right there, if you didn't know what that was. That's the first commandment. Verse 4, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. God is speaking through Moses to the people, telling him the first commandment and the second commandment, because they're kind of similar. You look at these, you're not going to have any God before you, and you're not going to make a graven image of any God before you, because he wants to be number one. So we can see here uh, that God, he's a jealous God, and he wants to be number one. If you kick him at a number one spot... You're fighting somebody that you don't uh, have the strength to whip. He wants the number one spot. And if you don't know who God is, his name is Jesus. And he is the one that came in. The Bible tells us in John chapter 1, I think it's verse 14, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. God robed himself in flesh. And a lot of people have a problem with that. And they say, no, there's three of them. No, there's only one. Just like there's only one of you when you was born out of your mother's womb there wasn't three of you and they picked which one they liked the best and tossed the other two there was one in, in the beginning we were made in his image and people say well that's our image that's what it says nah it's it's talking about himself he was he was talking to himself he was having a conversation let's make man in our image anyways uh, you got to have a good one god message in you and i wanted to touch on it a little bit that there's only one God and his name is Jesus. No matter how bad you think there's three, there's only one. <laughs> Praise God. Now we're in a race. Our text scripture talks about he that strives for the masteries. If you look at the amplified version, it talks about someone that's in a race for uh, striving something, you know, striving to win a prize of some sort. Well, we're in a race and this race is uh, one that we must run if we want to go to heaven. But if you don't do it right, you're going to go to hell. If you try to take number one spot, you are fighting the king himself. And uh, you're not going to win. Uh, you don't have the endurance. You're not fast enough and you're not strong enough to kick him out of number one spot. Even though you may try as hard as you can. Now, I, I just touched it a little bit, but that's not our focus tonight. I just want to make sure you understand that Jesus is God and that he has the number one spot. 
We read part of the second commandment. Don't make graven images of anything in the earth. He, he has something specific he's trying to tell us. Now, that may be hard for you to understand. So let's go to where Jesus broke it down. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. I just want to show you uh, how God is cool. He broke it down into better language for us. You're not supposed to make any other God before you hand me my phone there. I'm going to make a phone call. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Matthew chapter 22. Uh, somebody asked for it. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36 says this. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So if you want to know what that means, is don't, don't put any other gods before him. You're supposed to give him 100% of you. If you come in halfway, it's like a marriage. It, these kids are fixing to get married, and I've told each of them, I think I've told them, I don't remember, but I've talked about this a lot, is that if Brother Jamie and Sister Murray are going to get married and they bring 50 and 50, it makes 100, right? Well, in math it does, but in marriage it only brings 50%. Well, living for God, you got to go all the way. You cannot live for God with one foot in and one foot out. A man that rides the fence, we know the rest of the saying. Verse 39, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. There's something specific to this, that if you don't get the first commandment down, and you don't get the second commandment, you're kind of in trouble. Jesus tells us in a much easier way to understand that the first commandment and the second commandment are similar. And I want you to picture this in your mind. You're in a race, and if, you knock the, if you're in third place and you knock the second person out of, out of their spot, you become second place. What's your plan then? Take first place. That's just the way we're graced. We, we want first place, every single one of us. And we're commanded in the commandments not to do such a thing. We're commanded that we should treat our neighbor as we treat ourselves. The problem is, is uh, everyone wants to win. I want what I want, and I don't want it any other way. It's a fax. If you say, oh, no, <laughs> we're going to let you preach. Now, nah, I'm just checking. We're not get kidding. We're not going to let you preach because you're lying to us. And I said it already, but we could prove it out. Come play dominoes with me this Thursday or this Wednesday. And you're going to want to win. And you're going to get real mad like Sister Nancy does when I win all the time. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm messing with her. Sister Kathy beat us two times, three times in a row the other night, Nana. I didn't win one. But I didn't walk away going, you bunch of stinking cheaters. I didn't. Brother Mark, you haven't won yet? <laughs> Everyone, play Catan with the girls. <laughs> Nina says, oh yeah, she's going to win every time. Unless I really pull some fast moves, then I win. But you look at this, every one of us want first place. We want to be preferred. We want, we want to be the one that's recognized. We want to be the one that's put up. It's a valid human response. This is what we've been trained to do from our childhood. You got to get first place. If you didn't get first place, you, you're last place. We don't give awards for second place. Uh, you ever heard that? Now they give participation trophies. Who in here wants a participation trophy? No way. We want first place. I want to win. That's what I want to do. If I'm boxing somebody, I want to beat them. If I'm racing them, I want to be the guy that's, that's won. I'm not going to be racing anybody. It's kind of funny to think about. <laughs> and you see it, children's sports, they, they give the awards for first place. In Bible quizzing, we give the award for first place. Yeah, that's all fun in games, and it's fine in games. But when it turns bad is when someone becomes a sore loser. Where you guys cheated. 
We're playing volleyball, and you guys stacked the team against us. We had no chance. Me and my prime, me and Brother Matt, my wife and some of the girls from Lagrand, we were unstoppable. Just the way it was. And people called us all sorts of names, and they began to degrade us. You bunch of cheaters. You stacked the team. How many times we hear that? You take that person off that team, they're going to lose. Probably so. It's because there's a reason we had them on our team is they were good. The rest of us were just there kind of running around causing chaos. But every one of us have a desire to want to win first place. Don't tell me that I'm going to be last place. I want to be first place, preacher. Well, that's fine. I get it. But the problem is, is when you lose, what's your attitude when you lose? You stinking devil. Why did you cheat? Uh, me and Brother Jeff, we're just absolutely convinced Sister Nancy is shuffling dominoes under her dress or something, and we can't see them because she wins a lot, doesn't she, Brother Jeff? I think it's been several days since Brother Jeff has won. It takes a while for me to get some wins, and then I'll get a few. I think they feel bad, like maybe I'm going to pray that God will get them or something. I don't know. I don't. I just like playing. But we all want first place. You, who in here wants to lose? Nobody. Well, the only way to really win in this life is to lose. The Bible tells us if you'll lose for his sake, for the gospel, you'll gain so much more with him. I didn't put that scripture in here. But you can get into a game with people, and you hear it all the time. Come in here on Friday night, this coming Friday, and see the sore losers. You heard the youth leader. You'll see them. Well, yeah, but he's faster. Or we'll make excuses. I didn't wear my best shoes. You knew you were playing. Why don't you bring your best shoes? Yeah, he tripped me. She pushed me. I've watched these kids play, and there's a reason our walls uh, have dents in them. It's because they play hard. But you'll see them. Then they'll be like, you guys are such cheaters. It happens, Sister Kayla. It'll blow your mind. Come Friday, you'll see them. It's wild. And they'll, they'll throw a fit at each other. And it's not just them. The adults do it in the back. We'll look at Sister Nancy because she seems to burn through her dominoes. And I'll look at her and be like, Where'd your dominoes go? Come, Brother Jeff. We watch her like a hawk. Why? We making sure she ain't cheating. Huh, Sister Kathy? Brother Matthias is going to start watching her too. But when it becomes a problem is when you start tearing apart someone else. And you'll hear other people, dude, chill, it's just a game. You're like, no, I want to punch them in their face because I lost. It's true. How many in here are like, oh, it's okay, we lost? A dozen times in a row? Put your hands down because I've seen all of you get upset. I'm just not good at volleyball. I get it. <laughs> I'm not good at a lot of stuff. But we get upset. Now, playing games, there's nothing wrong with wanting to win in playing games. Friendly competition. But in this race living for God, we've got to do stuff that promotes our brother and our sister. In our, in our text scripture, let's go back to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Uh, I, I detailed the human mentality and the human idea of winning just for a few minutes here. And Paul is writing to Timothy, and he says in verse 4, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. What he's saying here is, if you're going to live for God and want to be pleasing to Him, you can't do things the way that it's normal to do them as a, as a normal person. You've got to live to a much higher calling or a much higher set of rules, a higher standard. All because you want to please him who has chosen you to be a soldier. And then it gives us the example here. If a man strive for masteries, he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. If you want to be a good soldier of Christ, you're going to have to start putting others first. You're going to have to start treating them better. You're going to have to start. Uh, this is what the Apostle Paul's telling him. Don't get caught up with the world and what their competition scheme is. Look at Christ and see what he did. And there's some examples. Everybody remember Neil Armstrong? That dude won all the time. They called him a cheater for years. And then guess what they found out? He was cheating. <laughs> exactly. He was using performance-enhancing drugs to make him pedal a little faster. I don't know. He was running the 
Was it Lance Armstrong? What did I say? Neil Armstrong? Neil Armstrong went to the moon. Supposedly. That was for all the conspiracy theorists out there. <laughs> but Lance Armstrong ran the Tour de France or rode it on his bicycle. And, and he was the best thing since sliced bread. And I think he won like nine of them. Do you know? He won a lot of them. And then they found out later that he wasn't so pure as they thought he was. And he had uh, cheated quite a bit. Boy, did they tear him apart then. Took away his medals. He, he didn't do it right. Well, if you want to go to heaven, you got to do it right. I told this example so that you could see. Man, I don't know what the deal is with that thing, but it is what it is. Uh, you're not going to get to heaven by breaking any law. Put up James chapter 2, verse 10. We're li living for God. We're instructed to obey all his commandments. To keep them. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, we don't preach the traditions of men here. Now, I hold standards because I ain't moving landmarks that my bishops, bishops, bishops set. And if you don't like it, well, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but I'm not moving landmarks because the scripture says you move landmarks, you're going to enter the fields of the fatherless. So if I preach something that you don't agree with that's in the Bible once or twice... And you say, well, you can't prove that as a doctrine. I can prove the landmark doctrine. It's in there more than twice. But look what it says in James chapter 2, verse 10. Whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Now, this uh, is all going to tie in together here. But we're instructed by the scripture that we must obey the rules and we must do it lawfully. You're not going to get your crown in heaven uh, if you mistreat your brother or your sister. Unity is at stake. God hates someone that would sow discord. Go read in Proverbs chapter 6. These six things that the Lord hate. And seven are abomination unto him. You have, to, you have to understand what the law says. You have to go read it for yourself. If you say, well, I didn't know, that's your own fault. Go write down Leviticus chapter 5 verse 17. And go home and study that out. This is basically what that says is if... You break the law and you didn't even know you were breaking the law. You're still guilty. It's because you didn't take the time to go study it out yourself. That's in your Bible. It's part of this law that uh, the writer is mentioning here. But when we treat other people, sometimes it's really easy. You're having a great day. Someone smiles at you. Hello. Back at you. Wake up on the wrong side of grumpy and someone smile at you. And then you'll look at him and be like, I'll kill you today. Watch me. I'll hit you with my car. I will run you off the road, buddy. You better be careful. Because we're having a moment. We're having an issue. You get, think about this. Your, your treatment of others is so important. And, and we'll buy ourselves a cup of coffee. I always give these boys a hard time because they went to... Subway, they know the rest of us are sitting here hungry for Bible study, and they never bring a subway. Maybe they're breaking a commandment here. Then Brother Eliel brought me a sandwich. Praise God. It was good. But you have to understand this. is you, You're supposed to treat others like you would treat yourself. Well, you may not have money to, to buy someone else a cup of coffee. Well, don't drink it in front of them then. Whatever. It doesn't matter. The treatment is what is what matters. If you're going to smile at somebody because you're having a good day, but the moment you're having a bad day, you start tearing them down, who do they think they are? Why are they smiling at me? I like smiling because smiling's my favorite. That's a, anyways. If it's if we're having a bad day, it's really hard to want to treat someone nice. Our stomach hurts, or we have a back issue. And we're expected to, by the Lord, to treat others as we would want them to treat ourselves. This goes so much deeper than you would want to realize. We break the sec second commandment. We mistreat everyone. It's just, you just do it. It's part of human nature. You break the second commandment, you don't really care. You'll, you'll just like, whatever. I'll just do the way I'm going to do things. You break the first commandment, you don't really care anyways. So you got to get your, your God put in the right spot. And you could say, well, I am treating people the way I'm supposed to be treated, Pastor. I'm mad at myself, so therefore I'm mad at everyone else. Eh, that don't fly. That don't fly with me. If you're mad, get prayed through over it. 
If you're upset, don't mistreat me because you're upset. I didn't do nothing to you. Uh, me and my brother Matt were EMTs and, and firefighters, and we were taught we're not part of the situation. We're there to help the situation. Well, a lot of people come into your life, and they don't know what, why Brother Eliel's having such a bad day. But all of a sudden, he's like, roar, and we're like, what gives, bro? Why are you not smiling today? Oh, I'm having a bad day. Well, don't meet, tr mistreat us because you're having a bad day. He didn't do it. He's always smiling. That's why I used him. But we forget in those moments that there's something called the golden rule. Remember, our text is, we must strive lawfully. The golden rule is this, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's a very simple language that really explains the second commandment. But it goes so much deeper. Look with me in Matthew chapter 7. I want to show you something interesting the Lord, the Lord shows me. This doesn't only apply to people at the church. This applies to every single human on the planet. If you are going to mistreat someone, you're mistreating God's creation. We could talk about stewardship. Oh, treating someone because they made someone else made me mad. Now that person didn't make you mad. And the Bible says uh, if someone smites you, turn the other cheek. But we get so upset at things going on in our lives that we say, everyone is on the bad list today. What's the old saying? I didn't wake up grumpy. I let her sleep in. That's a funny joke. But you have to understand, God doesn't view it the way we view it. He views it as if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love him, it doesn't matter what someone else would do to you. You'll treat them the best, like they're the best thing since sliced bread. But it really, it really matters in the house of the Lord. Because you've got a group of people that are trying to obey commandments. I'm trying to live in, in unity with Brother Efren, and Brother Efren's trying to live in unity with me. Brother, Brother Travis is trying to live in unity just like Sister is trying to live in unity. But if we start getting contention in the womb because someone's mad at one another, we start having a problem. And we break the golden rule. Look with me in Matthew 7, verse 9. I don't want to read all 14 scriptures, but it all applies. It says, and I'm just going to pick it up in the middle here. What man is there of you whom if his son will ask bread, will he give him a stone? If he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? This is like the care of a, of a father towards his son. This is how you're supposed to look at everyone else because this is how God views us. If you ask something from him, Brother Josh asked for energy to stay awake during church, and God blessed him with energy to stay awake during church. Yeah. It would be awful weird if God was like, nah, you're going to fall asleep right now, and he would just slept the entire service, bent over, prayed at the altar. Wouldn't that be weird? God doesn't do things opposite, and he expects us not to do things opposite. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things unto them that ask? And here's the golden rule. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. This example, clear from verse 1 all the way to verse 12, shows the treatment that God expects each one of us to give to our fellow brother and sister. I preached last week and used many of those scriptures, so we could just say this is a continuation on what I preached last Sunday night about the spirit of a Pharisee, is if you are willing to judge me more harshly than you're wanting to be judged yourself, shame on you. Because you got a beam in your eye, and you need, it, you need to remove it before you start trying to remove the little tiny speck that's in my eye. But Jesus flips the script here on us and says, this is how I expect you to treat others. And if you want to be treated a certain way, start treating people a better way. And then he says this, this is what God revealed to me, is that this is the law and the prophets. Now here's something so shocking. First and second commandment tell us that the entire word of God hangs on the first and second commandment. Okay. And then he tells us that the golden rule is the entire commandment. Think about this. Everything in your Bible, this is it's just going to blow your mind, is what God expects you to treat other people like. Think about this for a few seconds. 
Your treatment of me will show whether you're obeying the word of God or not. This is something to think about. What an incredible statement that this is in the Bible that my good and fair treatment of Brother Eliel or Brother Zach or Brother Jeff shows if I'm obeying the Bible. Because he said this is the law and the prophets. When you go back to verse 1 and you start looking at how he calls them hypocrites and says you judge this and don't judge unless you want to be judged. And he gives us all these examples through the beam and the moat and all this and he gets down to the golden rule. It's pretty interesting that he sums up the word of God in like 12 scriptures. It's pretty interesting. And upon the first two commandments hangs all of it. And our treatment of our fellow man is really what he wants us to, to work on. If you don't think it's important, take a look at the next two scriptures. If you say, oh, that's not a heaven or hell issue. Enter ye at the straight gate. Do you think this is odd? That I've read this scripture in this setting many, 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 many times for many years. And I've never saw the connection between the two. I thought it was always just a different statement. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Could this be a prerequisite to walking a straight and narrow path? That you got to first get down your treatment of others and get it right before you start obeying the rest of the law? This is the law and prophets. It's the race for last place. Why would I want to be last so that I can be first? The Bible says many times that he that is first shall be last and he that is last shall be first. If you're constantly striving to promote yourself, Promotion comes from the Lord. That's what the word says. I didn't read that scripture, but you can, go, you can go and study it out yourself. If you're striving to make it to heaven, but you're willing to step on the heads of everyone else around you to get there, you ain't going. Doesn't matter how you do it. Our treatment of each other matters, Sister Hawkins. As a pastor, I can't come berate you for doing something so dumb. And then go do something dumb myself and God look at me and go, I'm proud of you, fella. <laughs> no, he's going to look at me and say, you mistreated my child. What is the Old Testament standard? I'll bless those that bless you and I'm going to curse those that curse you. That applies. It applies today to every single one of us. Yeah, but they mistreated me, preacher. So he says this, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I shall repay. He said he'll get them. You don't have to go and try to slash their tire. God will do it for them. He'll make them hit the worst pothole in Rock Springs. He'll burn their house down and get them hit by a semi. He'll do all sorts of stuff. If he's getting vengeance for you, let him off the chain. People that get me. Now, Sister Michaela, I'll tell the story about her. She came in. She was quite the deal. And I looked and I was like, okay, I am not going to fight this chick. I'm just going to let God do it. Well, she was coming at me. She really was, Sister Kelly. You should have seen her. And then she disappeared, and I was like, I wonder where Sister Michaela went. And I looked and looked and didn't see you post nothing. I was like, well, guess what? She was posted. It was posted on a different site. She testified about that earlier. And I thought to myself at that time, that girl needs prayer. God is getting her. Because I literally told the Lord, God, you've got to fight that one for me because I ain't even try." Notice in the Bible it says it's better to dwell on the rooftops of a large house than in, or on the rooftops than in a wide house with a brawling woman. And I thought, I want nothing to do with that. I'll just let her do her thing and let God start to work. And boy, did he work. I'm not saying that to degrade her at all. God put her to task. He did it for me because I was like, God, I ain't going to try to fight that one. Sometimes I just like, get him, Lord, get him. Brother Josh and his, his soccer thing, he's, she's not the only one. The other people, I just pray, God, you know what to do. I don't have to go chase them around. I can't catch fish very well anyways. Glory be to God. Yeah. Praise God. She's got her son. She's got a husband. She didn't even want a husband, but God provided. <laughs> it's true. He's coming next week. I'm really excited about that, Brother Brian. I've been praying you'd get here quicker. 
But we're all striving to make it to heaven. We're, we're striving every single day. I want to go to heaven. I'm going to pray through. I'm going to do this. And then someone walks in and ruins our day. And we're like, I'm going to stomp your head to get there. It happens. We're humans. Who, who would think Sister Ford, little Sister Hawkins would try to step on someone's head? Has she done it? Oh, guarantee. If she said she hasn't, well, she's going to pray through tonight. She has. She's lived for God, what, 69 years? 70 years she's been living for God. How many people have you seen come and go? A lot. And they're all trying to stomp their way to heaven on people. Here's the question that's been burning a hole in the back of my brain. We're all trying to go to heaven, right? Who are you going to go to heaven with if you're stomping people down on your way there? I can't stand Brother Efren, so I don't want to go to heaven with him. And he's just over there being a good young man, living for God. I'm just using you as an example, bro. Don't, don't take it the wrong way. And he's like, you know, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to treat them right. I'm going to do what's right. And he goes to heaven. You only get one option, heaven or hell. And hell's not an option. That's why I said one. But who are you going to spend eternity with? If, if I'm fighting with my wife and can't hardly stand her, and I come and preach a standard here and then go home and mistreat her all week, it doesn't make very much sense, does it? Same with the rest of us. If I mistreat Brother Ben because he did something wrong and I just can't get past of it, or I can't get past what Brother Jamie did six months ago, so he doesn't deserve to go to heaven, but I do because I'm righteous. If you can't figure out how to get along with people now, who are you going to go to heaven with? I mean, honestly, this is, is so important. You can't even live for God right if you mistreat your fellow saint. Uh, I just preached the, the attitude of a Pharisee, and it's pretty crazy. Why did God make it this way? I have no idea. But then we look at the example he lived. They mistreated him from the moment he stepped on the scene. They called him all sorts of names and blasphemer, and they didn't know that they were talking to God himself. They tried shoving him off a cliff. They wanted to kill him lots of different ways. And he just kept getting out of it, getting out of it. And finally, one day, he, it was time for him to be sacrificed, and he let it happen. But on the cross, what did he say? Forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. You know, 90% of the time, especially for dudes, we ain't got a clue. We're just doing our thing. We are about the most clueless species on the planet, I think. We're smart and strong, very little brains. And I'm one of them. Brother Zach, we just don't know the intricacies of the woman's psyche. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. They're soft. And neither do they. One just admitted it. I wish it was recorded. <laughs> just joking. And we get together in a body and we start mixing and a joint gets out of joint and we start having problems and you don't realize that you're breaking a, such an important commandment it's the second commandment it's because you're trying to knock someone out of second place we are in a race but you're if you're racing for first place you're going the wrong way i want to race for last place that don't make any sense to the human mind why would you want to be last because jesus himself said if you're last i'll make you first but if you're first you're going in last place I think that's something we got to work on here. It's really hard when someone mistreats me. I see people that talk bad about me, and I think, wouldn't that be nice if their engine blew up right now? <laughs> I, I'm a human, just like you are. I hope they have diarrhea today. <laughs> Ride with me, and we get behind one of them semi-truck drivers. You might hear it come out of my mouth. I hope they have their engine blown. I wish I had a button that I could just shoot a rocket, boom, and knock him off the road, right? But we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to be Christ-like. Oh, don't talk about being a Christian and treating my fellow neighbor like I want to be treated, because that's not what Christ did. Yeah, he did. He lived his whole life that way, treating others as he would want to be treated, and they mistreated him clear to death. Well, one day it's going to come out. The Bible says, be sure your sins will find you out. You could have the perfect outside appearance to everybody. Come to church faithfully. Pay your tithes and offerings every month like you're supposed to. 
do all you're supposed to do, and then we get to heaven, or we get to judgment day, and the Lord will look down at you and say, how come you mistreated Brother Ephraim? How come you mistreated Sister Shay? How come you mistreated poor old Brother Jeff? How come you mistreated the truck driver that was on the side of the road that you wanted to run off? I mean, this is really... He didn't say just the people in the church. He said your neighbor. It's anybody else on the planet. This treatment of others is something seriously that we've got to work at. And we've got to work on. It's the second commandment. If you treat them wrong, then you're treating God wrong. Because you're on your way to take first place. Because you're running, running the wrong way in this race. The race that we need to run is the race for last place. Romans chapter 12. Turn with me there. I'm going to read this to you in the King James Version, and I'm going to read it to you in the Amplified Version because it helps break it down a little bit better and I think is good for us to hear. Romans chapter 12 and verse 9. When you're there, say amen. I don't have the Amplified Version for the screen, so uh, sorry, Brother Isaiah, I didn't think about that. Romans 12, 9 says this. You can just go through it when I... Read it, go through it in the King James. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Kind of sounds familiar to what Brother Ben read during the scripture. Or during the, during the testimony exhortation. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Nobody likes that, but here we are. Continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. Given to hospitality. This is the Paul, Apostle Paul's writing to the Roman church. Now let's read this in the Amplified. Just go back to verse 9. Verse 9 says this. Love is to be sincere and active. The real thing. Without guile and hypocrisy. Hate what is evil. Detest all ungodliness. Do not tolerate wickedness. Hold on tightly to what is good. Verse 10. Be devoted to one another with authentic brotherly affection as members of one family. Give preference to one another in honor. Verse 11. Never lagging behind in diligence. A glow in the spirit. Enthusiastically serving the Lord. Verse 12. Constantly rejoicing in hope. Because of our confidence in Christ, steadfast and patient in distress, devoted to prayer, continually seeking wisdom, guidance, and strength. Verse 13, contributing to the needs of God's people, pursuing the practice of hospitality. Pretty Breaks it down pretty simple there. Pretty easy to understand here that our treatment of others is absolutely imperative. You want to glow in the spirit? You want to glow like a beacon where people will see it and go, I want to be like that person. Treat everyone else like you want to be treated. The golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. When the musicians to come. If you don't get it right and, and you want second place, you're on your way to first place. Because the moment you start thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to think, you start becoming like Lucifer himself. He started thinking things that, well, it's my way or the highway. We don't all know what he thought, but he thought to exalt himself above the stars of God, which could be like the people or the other angels around him, his neighbors. And then he said, you know what? I don't want that only. I'm going to make my throne higher than his throne. Whose throne was he talking about? The king's. Well, when you get this attitude of it's my way and not your way, and you don't prefer your brother, you start causing a problem. Think about it like this. I've got an example for you. Picture yourself in a round swimming pool. This is really going to make a lot of sense to you. And we got everybody in this church in this swimming pool. And I'm going in one direction. Come on. Get along with me and I got my family behind me. Get along with me. We're going we're gonna to spin the water in a certain direction. Have you ever done that in a swimming pool? And, you know, there's elderly folks like Sister Hawkins. I'm creating such a wake that she can kind of just bob right along with me behind me. 
You know, she goes because she's she's elderly. She don't have much strength to push like she used to. Back when she was younger, she could probably lift a ton. I don't know if you knew this about her, but she made uh, probably a few tens of thousands of burritos and helped build the church. She used to be able to pull hard. But in this swimming pool, we've got the pastor and his family. We're swimming, and we're trying to make this pool go in a certain direction. And then other people come in, and they're like, now I don't like that direction. We're going to go the other direction. But what does that do to the flow? It impedes it. Till we get them talked into turning the other way. And finally, we get everybody that seems to be there going in the same direction. But you got some that are kind of standing around. You ever see them hanging on the side of the pool? Well, you know, the water, you have to start it from the outside. You don't start from the inside. You start on the outside and you start spinning. And the inside starts spinning automatically. We used to do that at Brother Kurt's pool all the time in LeGrand. Uh, we helped build the pool, so we had rights to the pool. It was awesome because we would call such a giant and say, we're coming over, and she'd kick anyone out that was there except Pastor and his family. All the girls hated us. We should have preferred them, but we didn't. We didn't care. We're like, we worked hard. This is our paycheck. Out you go. Anyways, we would get in there lots of times, and we would spin the water in one direction. Well, if we had somebody that wasn't doing it, we'd, hey, come on. Get it. We're trying to make a whirlpool. We want to see if the water will go all the way down to the bottom without touching. Who knows? You guys just do weird stuff. But we do this, and, and we're in this pool, this church, and we're swimming, and more people come in. And What do we do? We try to get them to join to go the same direction. Come on, join with me. We're going to go the same direction. You know, the people that get tired, what happens? They kind of bounce along behind the people that are pushing. But everybody's going in the same direction. When they get some rest, they'll start pushing again. Well, this is what unity looks like to God. I think it's, it's a simple example to use is that when everybody's pushing in the right direction, he looks down and goes, okay, now I'm going to start pouring out blessings. But you get Brother Jeff sideways, and he says, nope, I'm going the other direction. And he starts pushing against it and impedes the flow. God says, okay, I'm done. I'm going to wait till they're all back in unity again. It doesn't matter who it is. I could call on any person. I just use Brother Jeff because he's hardy and can handle it. We're all trying to push in the same direction, and we get more people in, and they're like, oh, I don't really know if I want to be here. And we get people trying to talk. Either they'll get in the pool, and they'll start pushing the right direction, or they'll get out of the pool. Just the way it works. Or they'll sit in the center and spin around real fast. But our goal is to get unity so strong that God brings the blessing in. The Bible says that this is where the anointing and blessing comes from. The Lord is in unity. He said, that's where I'm going to pour out the blessing. So when we're all pushing and we're fighting and we're working together and everybody's going in the same direction and then Brother Nate gets upset and he starts going the opposite direction, what does that do to the unity of our church? It slowly begins to destroy it. If he gets enough people with him to go the opposite direction, it shuts it all down. Then now we have head-to-head -head contest of, and we're back to going the wrong way in this race. Let's all stand tonight. This is what it looks like to me. I've seen it, and it's not just recently, but over the past year or so, this is as long as God's been talking to me about this, is we've got one direction we're pushing, but we all have to push the same direction. We're wanting to push the direction that Christ wants us to push. I don't have a plan. My plan is to follow him. Wherever he goes, that's where I want to go. If he takes me here, that's where I'm going to go. But if I get sideways with him and start going the opposite direction, I start saying, I'm the king. Well, it happens the same for you. If you start pushing opposite of what I'm trying to push, you're automatically fighting against God. You don't realize it because it's a swimming pool. We're just having fun and we can have church. And But I don't like so-and-so because, you know, he wore that flannel shirt again. Whatever. People come up with the silliest things. I just was telling, there's, there's a couple that's coming to church. They're so worried about being judged. I told them, I said, you ain't going to get that here. There's people, I was telling my brother Matt today, that quit living for God because someone walking opposite of the flow started talking bad about them. Remember that? That's not right. We shouldn't be that way. I want to push together. And the more people we get pushing together, the faster it's going to spin. Well, it's kind of like a tornado. What does a tornado do? When it goes, it picks up everything in its path. If God puts, us, puts your family in our path, they're going to have a choice. 
They'll just whoop, pull them right in. There's, a, there's something interesting I just were reminded of that they were trying to stop cyclones, hurricanes. And the United States Air Force came up with a plan. I don't know if you ever studied this. To fly a certain type of jet that had a lot of downward force push. It's called an F-4E Phantom. They were going to fly it backwards in the eye of a cyclone to stop it from causing a hurricane. This is in interesting stuff. They couldn't get it because they didn't have enough force to push against it. The, the, the one jet just didn't, couldn't, according to the science, create enough force to stop that amount of air movement. Well, you're not going to stop this church from being built. None of us will. If I get sideways, guess what's going to happen to me? Ejected. You'll just pick someone else. If you get sideways, you'll get towed with the flow until you become a drag, and then you'll either go down or you'll get out of the pool. We're not going to throw you out. That's not our goal. Our goal is to keep as many people as possible. It's a snowball that's rolling. We want to stay working together. But if we can't keep from being at each other's throats, uh, you know, I, I watch these boys wrestle, but I've watched these boys wrestle and pick on poor Brother Chilo. It's his fault. He, he earns it. But I don't, I don't want to see it happen anymore. And I told a couple of them, knock it off. Because I'm seeing someone get bullied, and they already have enough problems in their life, and they're supposed to come here and feel loved. i got to work overtime. What's that mean? In the pool, i got to push harder. i got to dig a little deeper to keep the spin going so that Brother Elio don't quit on me. Well, that's how he, he better not. <laughs> Sister Michaela is going to come get you. But if you're actively working against me and trying to run people off, I'll pray they got to get you. He said he'd take vengeance for me. God, these people, are, he's done it. He weeded our church so thin. I'm not trying to threaten anybody, but Brother Mark, it got thin. We got down to what, 13 people? And six of them was my family. I want to see our church grow. I want to see every one of you blessed beyond measure. But the only way we're going to get that is if we're in perfect unity. That means you got to work with me, and i got to work with you even if I look at you mad. And i got to work with me even if you give me an attitude about me looking at you mad. And it applies across the aisle. Tonight, I, I don't know if you feel like praying, but I do feel like uh, we, we want to be in unity. We need to be in unity, and I felt the Lord is, has pushed me in this direction because this is what He desires. He can't bless us and bring more people in. We got billionaires supposed to come to this church. Who's going to pay for all the new stuff, right? Well, we don't want to push them off. We want them to walk in and go, I'll get behind that psycho little fat guy with the balding head. I'll push behind him. He's worth it. Look what he's doing with these kids. You know, the, the couple that came the other night, I told him, I said, it's like herding cats. He said, you got a lot of cats are herding. This is awesome. And then they told Sister Mary, I'll be back. We'll be back. Did you know they were backslidden Pentecostals before? There's other people that are coming that have started coming to this church. They're also backsliders. Look at Brother Kevin. Look at his testimony. He said, everyone that knew me and that had, he knew what he was saying. The girls didn't. They probably wanted to hug him, but he knew the rules. Well, he might have wanted to hug them. But everybody came up to him and hugged him and told him, man, we've missed you. It's because we have. Did you know that Orlando has not ceased to pray for your name every single service for, since you've been gone? You only imagine. But it's that love that he feels here. He's like, I'll go back to that. But if one of you go up to him and be like, mm, that flannel shirt's got to go. <laughs> or you're going to go with it. I just use that as a dumb example. But that's people feel. We're a feeling world right now. Everybody's hypersensitive. Uh, they walk in and go, Oh, they're mad at each other. I don't want to go to that church. I had one family come to me, this is a couple years ago, and say, do you know you've got discord in the church? I said, yeah, this is a church. Well, why? I said, just come to church. Don't worry about it. They're like, yeah, but do you see what's going on? Yes, I do. I promise you I do. But i got to preach it out of them. I can't walk up to them and say, okay, you leave or you leave one of the two. It doesn't work like that. Do you want God to treat you like that? you got to remember who's going to hold first place all the time. The king will. And if you get in opposition to him, he might just say, well, looks like I don't want you in my pool anymore. It would be a sad day. I want to work together. 
tonight, if you want to come and pray, I want everybody just come up front and let's all uh, talk to the Lord for a few minutes tonight about what we've heard. As they begin to sing, just come up and stand. Join hands if it's appropriate. Pray with your neighbor. And let's, let's work to God and live, work for God and live for Him together. We need to be in unity. You want to be blessed? Get in the pool. Start pushing in the right direction. Make room so the, the girls can get up front here. God's body. You feel the Holy Ghost? I do. It's because He wants us to be in unity. He wants us to be in perfect unity. This is what unity is all about, so we get the blessing. Why don't you talk to Him for a few minutes, and if you've been at odds with somebody, repent about it. Tell God you're sorry for, for trying to cause waves. Tell Him how much you love Him and how much you do want to see him one day God I need you God I need you this is the only way it works this is the only way it's going to happen is if we get in unity unity works unity is where the blessing is poured out you're part of me and I'm part of you I want you to know that I've got your back I want you to know that no matter what happens, if something happens, I'll be there with you. Why don't you pray together as a family? I love you, sir. I love you, ma'am. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we're all part of God's body. Oh, it's will. Every need would be supplied. Oh, come on. The person on your left and the person on your right ought to be the most important people on the planet to you. We got to work together. We got to strive for the masteries, but we got to do it lawfully. I don't want to break the law and go to hell because I couldn't work with my brother. I couldn't work with my sister. I couldn't make mends with someone that had wronged me. Oh, agree with me. Oh, we're all a part of God's body. It is His will. Every need would be supplied. Oh, you are poured into me. I need you to survive. Hallelujah. Come on, why don't you just submit to the will of God in your life? Tell him, okay, God, I'll do it your way. God, I'll walk your path. God, I know it's straight and it's narrow, but that person's got my back. The person behind me's got their back. I love you, Jesus, and I love your people. God's body. Every need would be supplied. Oh, you are important to me. I need you to survive. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I need you. You need me. We're all. Come on, it's one body, not five. It's not your way, it's his way. It's not my way. I'm going to prefer you. I'm going to help take care of you. When you fall, I'll pick you up. When you stumble, I'll be there to help hold your hand. When I fall, I need you to be there for me. When you stumble, I need you to be there to help me when I stumble. So I'm going to help you every which way. I'll carry you if you need carried. Oh, I need you. I need you. Oh, you need me. You need me. Oh, we're all. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Oh, agree. agree with me. Oh, hallelujah. Me. You're we're all. all Come on, we're all part of one body. God's body. 
it's not your way. It's his way. It's all of our way. We're behind the king. We're going to move with the cloud. We're going to go where the wind blows us. We're going to go where God guides us. And along the way, if we work together, God will bring more in just like us. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you need me. Hallelujah. Part of God's body. Come on, no man left behind. No woman left behind. We're going to work together. We're going to get a hold of this thing and we're going to make it go. We're going to all push in the same direction. We're going to help each other grow. Yeah, we're going to have problems. We're going to have trials. But we're going to get past it. We're going to move on together through Christ. I need you to survive. Hallelujah. Oh, I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Oh, agree. Come on. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Oh, it is His will that every need be supplied. You are born into me. I need you to. Come on, you need me just as much as I need you. Oh, I need you. Why don't you sing that song to your neighbor? Sing it to the person next to you. I need you so much. I need you to have my back. I need you to help support me when I'm hurting. I need you to help carry me when I'm struggling. Why don't you sing that to the person to your left and to your right? Squeeze their hand. Give them a hug. Say, I got you. No matter what happens, I've got your back. No matter whatever goes on, you've got, you've got my support. Oh, I need you to survive. I need you. You need me. Come on, this is what a family does. We stick together. We're going to go to heaven together. We're going to spend eternity together. No one left out. No one left behind. We're going to make it, you and I, together, walking hand in hand, side by side. Oh, His will, every need be supplied. You are report unto me. I need you to survive. Oh, I need Body. Why don't you shake someone's hand and tell them how important they are to you? Hug their neck if it's appropriate. We are in this together. We're in a war. We got enough coming against us already. I need you, ma'am. I need you, sir. Help us in the name of Jesus. Oh, you're important to me. I need you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, this is what working together as a family is all about. Oh, I need you. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part all of God's body. Come on, they feel unity when they walk in here. People see the unity of our church and they want to be a part of it. This is what it's all about. Oh, I need you to Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I need you. You need me. Oh.
to.